Okay, exciting GMBN racing news to come, which I'll get to in a moment. We'll also be heading over to the bike festival, Rocky Mountain Marathon in Willingham, Germany. However, let's start this week with the World Cup cross country in Germany. I don't have the footage, but I can give you the lowdown nonetheless. A very wet and sticky race awaited all in Albstadt this week. The track and weather turned out to be very unpredictable, but in the end, the result was a brace of current world champions taking control in impressive style. Nino Scherter had suffered an important defeat in the opening round, where, if you remember, Sam Gaze had outsprinted the legend and finally stopped that winning streak in Stellenbosch, South Africa. This week, Sam didn't get any luck and was defeated by a mechanical in the form of a punch. The elite men is of course full of frets though, so Nina would need to be holding off some big efforts from Stefan Tempier, Matthew van der Poel and Maxime Marot. However, it was clear from the first half of a lap, Schurter sure, had to recover from a difficult starting position after a mechanical in the XCC, but he'd done exactly that before the start of lap two. And to me, never looked in any doubt. Regular service has resumed in World Cup cross country, a very impressive win. In the women's race, Yolanda Neff rode a masterclass in the ultra difficult conditions. This race pretty much saw everyone hit the floor at some point, but many can't help thinking that a stroke of genius, or maybe it was well-earned experience in tire choice made the big difference here. Neff decided to forego rolling resistance for grip with the decision to ride mud tires. The time gap after lap three suggests that that paid off handsomely because she was over two minutes ahead. Either that or Neff is in truly frightening in good form. Jana Bellamoina completed a great return to racing after a break with second position and Torba followed her home for third place. The Bike Festival is an amazing event with fabulous attendance, a festival that's been running for over 20 years now, and always a plethora of racers and spectators who want to see what's happening in the industry. But many also want to race in either the Downhill, which is part of the IXS Downhill Cup, or the main event, the Marathon. Actually, the Downhill this year was once again well attended, all riders enjoying a course full of jumps and berms that required a skill hand to negotiate. If the POV we saw here was anything to go by, it looked pretty fun to ride too. Now to that marathon, whether we're talking about the short, medium or long distance options of the marathon, I'm always personally very impressed with anyone who wants to take part. But for today at least, I'm gonna concentrate on the full distance results for this event. And this year, it finally worked out. In the fifth time of asking, Urs Huber has claimed victory in the Rocky Mountain Bike Marathon. The sportive highlight of the 21st Bike Festival in Willingham. The Swiss Pro mastered the new 116 kilometer course and it's 3,220 meters of climbing through the upland region in four hours, 39 minutes. While Stephanie Dorn of Germany also triumphed for the first time in the women's event, clocking in a time of 5 hours 45. Tim Bohm took second in the men's event, therefore securing a 1-2 punch for Team Bulls, which had put its stamp on the long distance classic. The 35-year-old from Frankfurt edged off reigning Swiss champion Kony Lusa of the BIXS Pro Team in a thrilling spin to th sprint to third. Always great when such a long race comes down to a close finish. However, at first it did look like a head-to-head -head duel for the victory and not like a photo finish for the runner-up position after Huber and Sasha Weber had pulled clear from the rest of the seven-man breakaway group when entering the second of three revised entertaining laps of the course. Huber, last year's second place rider, had significantly upped the tempo in the climb to the famous Horn Einberg after Weber had successfully closed the gap to Martin Frey, another Team Bulls racer. Huber attacked out of the wake, surprising his competitors of whom only Weber was able to hold the pace. Subsequently, both worked well together and constantly extended their lead until Huber noticed the first signs of weakness in his German rival. As a result, the former European Championships runner-up riding for Maloha Rocky Mountain had to let go and lost more and more ground, finally wrapping his day off as six in the men's race with a gap of more than 15 minutes. While Weber couldn't match his last year's strong performance, Huber was able to enjoy the fruits of his hard labour. The marathon in Willigan is a classic and has always been a must-have win on this man's bucket list. This time everything fell into place. 
On the women's side of things, Dortmund resident Stephanie Dorn was able to bring home a wire-to-wire -wire victory in 5 hours 45 minutes, which is a monumental time in the saddle. So imagine the effort of every rider taking on the full-length race. Big respect. The 25-year-old racing for MSV Essen Steel, who came out victorious in last year's German University Championships, relegated her experienced rivals Katrin Schwing of the Katrin Schwing Trek team and Sarah Reiners of Focus Rapiro Racing to the respective second and third rank. Now back to World Cup news for GMBN. We'll be heading to a few events this year to meet you guys and take a good look at who's riding what and how they're doing. We'll also be just hanging out and enjoying the racing just like you. It's going to be great and we're hoping to see you there. First up, cross country in Nova Mesto. Yes, this week our main man from GMBN Tech, Doddy, will be heading over to Nova Mesto to get a serious update on all bikes and pros, um, what they're using and as the season progresses, seeing what they're doing. He will be sure to spot any changes and trends, I'm sure. When I spoke to a very excited Doddy earlier today, he was really interested to see what bikes are chosen for the World Cup in Nova Mesto, especially because Albstadt was a hardtail choice really. But so soon after that, with the XCC in mind, will the top racers jump back over to their full suspension kit for a rough Nova Mesto course? Doddy is also very keen to get to the bottom of the Nino shirt uh, malfunction in this week's XCC. I'm wondering if there could be any issues with that fancy wireless drivetrain. There'll be lots of snooping going on by Doddmeister this week. Let us know in the comments section down below what you'd like our tech expert to be looking at. Now to downhill with a visit to Fort William. The legendary World Cup downhill is fast approaching with round two of the 2018 UCI World Cup series, which once again will be held on the monster of a track for the 15th time, which is amazing. The track itself is always punishing and I've heard this year the muddy section through the trees has been removed, which means it could be a very bumpy rock fest all the way down the 2.82 I think it is, kilometre course uh, of the Neverest Range. A rough five minutes await the fastest bike riders on the planet, maybe a little less than five minutes if you're Aaron Gwynn or Greg Minner. Because this is the local World Cup race for GMBM, we'll be there in force to hang out and watch the racing with you all. Make sure you come over and say hi if you're going to be there. Okay, thanks for watching the race news this week. Remember, if you have any podium shots or finishers medals of your own racing to share, new or old, then send it in to us at racenews at gmbn.com and we will show it right here. I like celebrating your efforts too, you know. I'll be back later this week for the Dirt Shed Show, so join me then. But in the meantime, why don't you hit here to watch episode two of Neil's Training for Enduro series. Hit the globe to subscribe and give me a thumbs up like of course. And I will see you next time on Race News at GMBN.